Well, good morning, Wheaton College. Uh, so glad to have with us today Mr. David Stewart. I met David, this is the first time we've met in person. We met during COVID uh, through a Wheaton alum, friend of mutual friend from St. Louis, Larry Absher. And Larry said, you, you guys need to connect. I had an opportunity to uh, participate in one of the Worldwide Technologies Global Family Worship Times, Family Prayer Times. So that's how we got connected. We've been trying to connect on campus. So I'm gonna interview David today. I'm not gonna give him a big introduction. He'll introduce himself along the way, but I will say uh, he is the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, which is actually recognized as one of the best Fortune 100 companies to work for and it's the largest privately held black-owned business um, in the United States. But importantly for our purposes, David is living out his kingdom calling um, in the business world. So let me start at the beginning. Tell me, how did you first, you, you have been very public in saying, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. How did you first sense God's calling on, on your life to have Jesus be your leader? Uh, so let me start by just saying thank you for allowing me to be here with all these wonderful students. Uh, you are our future. And my life purpose, as I begin to recognize it, begin to unfold, uh, uh, is, is all about you and service to you. You are our future. And uh, as I look at it at this stage of my life as well, for me, the time I spend here is the most valuable time I could spend. And believe me, I don't have a whole lot of time to spend these days, okay? Uh, but for me, it's about eternal return on investment. I can live well beyond my physical ability to be able to be here if I pass on the Word of God to you. And uh, that is my call. Uh, and listening to this music here just kind of connected me back to my roots uh, and back to my mother singing that. It's okay, take a minute. Uh, you were asking me, where, where did that spiritual journey start? It was with songs like this. Uh, uh, her uh, encouraging the word, her uh, encouraging us to go to, to uh, Sunday school, go to church, was an integral part of my upbringing. And so I have an obligation to that, to the gospel, uh, to that foundation that was given to me, to much given, much required. And so as I, as I think about the platform that we've been blessed with to be able to carry that message on for generations is, is top of mind in everything that I do. So at the end of every day, at the end of every day, even to this day, at 72 years old, I ask myself, if I'm, am I lead, leading my, living my life worthy of the sacrifice that was made on my behalf. Now, my mother and father, right? But let's think about that as it relates to what was done on the cross just for you, and you, and you, and you. It's a powerful, powerful way to live your life of faith that, you know, has no apologies for being a person of faith, no matter where you are. And I'm not a minister, but I... I, I but maybe you preach a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I know that I've been blessed with this platform, blessed with this platform that allows me to be able to minister to people in probably the most, uh, the most significant area of our community, and that's in business uh, and, and guiding it with the power of the Holy Spirit within the culture of worldwide and its ecosystem that ministers to, to people in an area that's just kind of not been considered before in the past. Let me just uh, back up just a second to how you got your start in business. So at some point in your life, you've already said, if God has given you a lot, there's a requirement that you offer a lot to him in return. 
When did you sense God calling you to be in the business world, or how did that get started? Where did the vision for that arise? You know, as I think about that, you know, I think about the, the, the examples that were for me during a very, very difficult time in this country's history. I think about the wonderful examples I saw of, of people that maybe didn't have the same kind of opportunities. I mean, we were living in a small town, uh, and uh, we uh, have seven brothers and sisters on the, literally on the other side of the tracks. And now, you, it's hard to imagine in the 50s and 60s, but I'm trying to capture the picture of, of the town that I grew up in. Segregation was the top of the list of things. Segregated community, segregated school, segregated everything. I mean, the, even the movie theaters we couldn't go through. We had to sit in the balcony of the movie theater, or uh, there was restaurants we couldn't go to afford to go to a restaurant anyway couldn't get to. Uh, my parents just struggling trying to, you know, uh, for employment or opportunities and so forth as well. All those things were real. We, we lived it uh, every day. And when you're m minimized and marginalized in that kind of way, you know, there's only one source you can turn to. And so as I think about that, I think about that, uh, so, and the hardship and the challenges associated with that, I learned the power, the power of trusting in God because they lived it. I watched them live it. I watched them uh, live and, and, and work and be in such um, grace and such mercy and such forgiveness and the power of, of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humbleness, and self-control. And there's nothing that can come against that. So the first entrepreneurs I saw was God blessing our family and seeing my father, you know, uh, create jobs, create opportunity. Uh, the gifts that it was have being recognized, you know, as whether it was him hauling trash or whether him uh, raising the farm animals or whether it uh, was, was the guards we were blessed with or the, or the fact that we were bucket bells and uh, bucket bells of hay for that matter. Or he was a, even a part-time uh, police officer when they needed him uh, and so forth as well. But seeing him create opportunities to feed his eight children, you know? And so, when, as I think about the significance of those moments, uh, those were really uh, a very special time in building a, uh, a strength and a, and a resolve around creating my own. And you saw modeled in your family context a work ethic that was God-honoring, rugged, robust. Now, we're blessed to have not only David Stewart with us this morning, but also his wife, Thelma. Let's welcome her. And I've, I've heard you describe her as the love of your life. You've been together 47, 48 years, I think you told me. Here's a question I want to ask, and that is, how has trying to live out faithful marriage vows made you a better follower of Christ. How has that relationship shaped your life? What would be your testimony about marriage so, so and its I will, influence? I will, I will say this, is that as, I, as I think about uh, 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 Thelma and I think about the, the life that we've lived uh, and the, the blessing, the fact we even met one another is a, is a story oh, all tell, to Tell itself. us that story. These students <laughs> want to hear that story. I know they do. Well, uh, we, we had a kind of a mutual friend, and she has since, uh, uh, God bless her, passed on, but uh, that insisted that she come to a gathering. She knew that I would be present. And, um, you know, I, I'm a former basketball player, and, and we, there was basketball players that kind of hung together, and we, we had gatherings every now and then. 
and she knew that I would be at this gathering, and she said this would be the perfect person for you, and she insisted that my wife come to meet her future husband. No, no pressure, though. No pressure. And uh, my wife said that she had really gotten ready to kind of turn in for the night and so forth and so on. And she had got some soup and she said she was getting ready to, 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 to just go to bed. And uh, it's her, her, her friend insisted on coming out there. She came out there unexpectedly uh, and then started knocking on her door because she was in determined to get her to come to this gathering to meet her future husband. <laughs> and, um, that she, and she didn't know me that well, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, she, she got her to, to come to the um, particular gathering and I met her actually across the room. And, and she, or according to Thelma, she said, don't look around, but he's here. And so she turned around and I came over and asked her to dance. And we've been dancing ever since. <laughs> All right, there you go. So there's some good lessons there about doing your friend a solid. Uh, <laughs> taking some initiative, gentlemen, please. So some good lessons there. All right, I want to talk about um, the way, the place that we connected because as your company was facing COVID, you thought it was very important to have opportunities to pray and worship together. Just talk about what that's, how that started, what that has meant to have these weekly family prayer gatherings for worldwide technology. So one of the things that were hap happening during COVID, as you, many of you, you know and experience yourself, there was, uh, uh, the devil is here to kill, steal, and control. And so, during that period of time, we, we saw elements of that. I mean, there were people who were so full of fear and so full of doubt and didn't know where to turn. And companies, full companies, were just at, at such calamity and uh, not, not really sure about themselves. And we wanted to make sure during that period of time that we were the light. In, in that very dark period of time. We know what the light is, right? Uh, and so we, 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 we said, well, you know, why don't we, why don't we really turn to the Lord uh, and, and providing, providing um, a light for people to see, to truly have trust and faith in God and, and, and know that, uh, fear not, for I'm with you, and knowing and knowing that he is, he will never leave you or forsake you. We wanted to reinforce, you know, the value of 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 our belief system back into not only our company, but for companies in our entire ecosystem and their families, and giving them reassurance. So we started the worldwide technology prayer call, and uh, even with that. We had started a biblical business training 13 years prior to that. We didn't know that we would fast forward that this would be incorporated as a part of it as well. Encouraging Bible study in the workplace. Biblical business training. And we uh, put together a staff, we put together a curriculum, we put together all this, and we began to, to really incorporate that, not only in our culture, but in our entire ecosystem. Uh, our partners, our customers, uh, and they're the biggest companies in the world. You know, and it's all optional. We're not, in, we're not forcing people to do anything. It's something that we think was, was really important to really uh, feed, feed into uh, the, uh, the, 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 the ecosystem of the relationships that we had in, in, in the marketplace. And it, is, it has been such a blessing to see the change and the impact that it's had on not only the 
businesses, but their families, a way of life, uh, a, 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 a clear way of life that, that has made such a difference in our culture, but in the culture of the partners that we're working with each and every day. I talk to a lot of our alumni that are in the marketplace, and they're always thinking about, how can I live out my kingdom calling in this marketplace venue? So I really admire what you've done with Worldwide Technology. I would imagine, even it being optional, you must get some pushback from some of your employees from time to time. How have you handled that opposition, or what do you say when people say, you know, business isn't the place for prayer? Um, how have you thought about that or navigated that? So, you know, you, you, um, my conviction around that, my, you know, commitment to, to that, you know, first of all, uh, it says in the word, fear not for I am with you, right? Uh, and uh, I, um, I, I walk by faith. I, I, I just do. And the other thing, too, is that the criticism is is are, are hurting people want to hurt others and there's a ministerial opportunity in all of that that is really uh, um, uh, I, I, I have to show that light of, of Jesus uh, during that period of time there was a whole lot of people who criticized Jesus right uh, you know and a whole lot of people cr criticized a whole lot of people who who walked in faith uh, I see it as a huge opportunity uh, to be able to uh, minister to people that may not, may not have had the, we would not have had that opportunity otherwise. I've got here a copy of uh, your book, David, uh, Leadership by the Good Book, Timeless Principles for Making an Eternal Impact. And one of the things that's really clear from this book is that Scripture informs your approach to leadership, your approach to family life, your approach, approach to philanthropy, your approach to leadership in the marketplace context. What have been for you some of the key Bible verses or Bible texts or Bible principles that are just really core for you as you think about how to live out your Christian testimony? Well, I, let me also mention something I said earlier uh, as well about um, uh, the... the um, uh, people who criticize uh, understand I, I own worldwide technology. Uh, actually, and I work for Jesus. Okay? Uh, uh, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to make sure I cleared that up. <laughs> uh, you were talking about Bible, the book. key Bible texts, Bible principles. So, so What's me, been let me core give you for something you? I think that was really key for me as I think about you know my my, my, my life and that really woke me really kind of woke me up to to who I really was and I want you to hear this because it changed my life forever um, and and how I was being influenced and then how I influenced myself how I encouraged myself in my faith that was really really important for me to know and I'll go back to uh, Ephesians 3.20 and Ephesians 3.20 says glory be to God that works within us that can do exceedingly above all you can think, dream, or pray for. That resides in each and every one of us. The power of the Holy Spirit working within us that can do exceedingly above all you can think, dream, or pray for, there's not anything you can't do. And God is good to those who love him who are called according to his purpose. And so, walking your call, walking your, in what your purpose is, is extremely important for you to, to really pray about, you know, because he'll give you the resources. I mean, he'll have you going well above what your, uh, what your capabilities are because he just blessed you. As, as, as you get out of your way, he then takes on because I could have never thought possible just growing up and the way I was, grew up um, that I'd be owning and controlling a $20 billion a year global business in technology. 
I'm, I'm, not a I'm not an engineer. I'm not a technologist. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a business person, you know. And to, to, to realize that and to realize the significance of that platform and ministry and probably the most um, unchurched area in our economy, and we're so desperately need to be there. And folding in the behavior and the, the power of the Holy Spirit into the algorithms of, of development in AI, for example, today, or in any other area of our, 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 our businesses and our way of life is so critical. So I know for a fact that I was born for a time such as this. Uh, to, to do that. That's my assignment. You know, and he will make that happen. And, but I have to be convicted without question that, you know, I, I, I am led and guided by the Word of God that's foremost in my mind. It says, seek ye first. I'm always reminded, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. And so, uh, Matthew 6, 33, I kind of live by that every day. And so, uh, so just know that you're a child of the king, you're a joint heir in Christ Jesus, you're Abraham's seed, you, you ought to be saying glory, hallelujah. Because to, just to know that says, you know, <laughs> you're everything you're supposed to be. And you're, I talk about this a lot about our business. I talk about the things that we're involved in. You're it's so valuable. You're one of one. He made your copy and made no other. You're one of one. And you're a child of the king. Wow. Guess how special that you are how significant you are, how important you are, the difference that you will make because you are on this earth. So don't let anybody, be careful about who you hang around with because they will minimize you, they'll marginalize you, they'll undermine you, they'll, you know. So uh, be careful who you're listening to. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? And then you begin to speak those words of faith, right? It says also from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Speak your words of faith, right? There's power in his word. Power in your words. So just, again, I could get really, oh, sorry for. No, this is good. This is good. No, we appreciate this biblical encouragement, this affirmation. It's just a good example of um, when you're steeped in the word of God, it just flows out of you and has an influence on others. Let's, I want to ask you about the life of prayer because um, that's been very important for your leadership of your business. What have been some of the landmark experiences that you've had of God answering prayer that have just encouraged you to continue on in the life of prayer? Well, <laughs> I, I had something happen to me in 1993. There was a, we have a very difficult time in business and we were being challenged, and I was millions of dollars in debt, and I was just questioning, you know, we're, we're, we're in the right business as well, you know, because I had started this business with five people and 4,000 square feet, you know, and calling it worldwide technology. And I had so many people saying, well, do, you don't have a technology background, and yeah, you started this company, and you're worldwide technology, and out of St. Louis? Don't you know you're black? You know, it's, I mean, the, everybody with these doubts and questions and, you know, uh, whether, whether that's going to happen. I, and then all of a sudden, we, we, this business wasn't go, doing that well. We're challenged with all these, you know, uh, with vendor partners and also with our customers and so forth. Well, I had a guy reallocate some money to his, his own pocket as well uh, during that time as well. Well, in fact, I was uh, hard-pressed to even make my payroll. You know, except for my wife and I and our family, we, we, we always didn't make payroll seemingly for some strange reason because had to pay everybody else. You know, it's about putting other people first and their family first and the service to others, right? And, and um, 
So I just, I just recall that period of time, and it was a very dark period of time, and I had just gotten my, uh, uh, I just gotten my car repossessed as well. Uh, and uh, so I was out in the parking lot, and they were kind of towing it away. And I said, gosh, you know, I didn't call a car repairman, and they're towing my car away, and I'm saying, oh my gosh. They're towing my car away. So I, I ran out there to, to stop them from towing my car away. Uh, and I, I told them stop because I had some other items in the, I had my briefcase in the trunk of the car. So I got that out and they, I said, well, why are you taking my car away? I said, because you haven't paid. <laughs> and and so, uh, so it was a really difficult time. And so at that moment, that moment, my mother-in-law, mother-in-love, which I call her to, the, to this day, <laughs> calls me and prays with me. And she says, uh, I want you to read, I want you to read Psalms 91. So I read that every day, every day. And uh, during the most, dark, the most difficult and challenging times in my life, there have been prayer warriors and prayed for me. And as I sit here today, my wife of uh, 47 years, every morning, she gets up and she prays over me. Well, there you go. Um, it just shows what a huge difference it makes when you have loving people in your life that care for you in the most difficult times, are there for you with scriptural encouragement and with prayer. And as you're seeing today, you can't even express, you can't even put into words uh, what that means for you um, in your life. I'm going to give you, um, before we close, just a fine, you've given us, uh, I <laughs> mentioned earlier, I was going to give David an opportunity to give you advice. He said, oh, they're going to get advice all right. So we, we've, we've had some of that already. Uh, and if these, these are students that are studying hard, making the most of their education, seeking to grow in Christ, um, want to make a difference in the world. Um, for Jesus Christ. Any other advice that you want to give to them just to make the most of this opportunity in this season of life? I, I think uh, uh, valuing the time that God has given you is really, really important you recognize. Don't waste time. Uh, because once you spend it, it's spent. Uh, and your, your time in and service and commitment to others and blessing others and giving to others and caring for others, investing time, effort, and energy into improving their lives is one of the best investments of time that you can get. Uh, because there's a huge return on that. Given will be given to you, right? Press down, shake together, and running over. The gift of giving and caring for others is, and, and, and loving for others, I think is probably one of the most significant things I can leave with you uh, today. Uh, and and uh, today, you, you, you're building a lot of friendships, a lot of relationships. So relationships that you're spending time on will be relationships that you will have for the rest of your life. Uh, your reputation matters. Uh, the, the, the core values and belief system that you have and your behavior matters in that as well. So uh, uh, be careful what you represent in that. Because those, those relationships 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, they will know exactly who you are. They will, they will, you will, you just pick up where you left off. 
and there will be meaningful, deep relationships where people will not only trust you, but they'll work with you, they'll do business with you, they, there will be success that you will have together as a result of that. And you may not have connected with them, but 20, you know, uh, when you were in college, right? Uh, I've shared that with my, 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 my kids uh, many, many years ago, and they took heart to that and found that that, uh, that was extremely valuable advice to them. Uh, I have, and I'm sure the, within the, as a father, okay, but I have two Oscar award-winning producers. I've got two children. We have two children. Uh, how is that? Um, well, I, I think it has a lot to do with, you will know them by their fruit. <laughs> uh, and I think it has a lot to do with, uh, obviously, the, 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 the faith that we instilled in, in, in them. One is on the animation side, and one is on the, on the um, uh, film side. And they're, they're producing meaningful uh, productions that affect people's lives, that, that minister to people, that, that are, uh, will have a profound effect in an area that obviously lack, lack a lot of the kind of principles that we live by, that we think are so vitally important that we're passing on to our, our, our children. And so I don't know if you, any of you know about Hair Love. You heard of Hair, hair Love? Well, th that was my son, production. Uh, Manchester by the Sea, that was my daughter, production. So that gives you a little example of the kind of stuff to do. There's a new movie coming out called, uh, uh, it's called Cast, Cast. Uh, it brought me to tears. I'm kind of a crybaby today for some strange reason. Uh, but, but that's my, one of my daughters is the executive producer on, 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 that, on that film coming out uh, shortly as well. So, there, so look for their names. There will be a lot that will be coming out with Nickelodeon and also coming out with uh, uh, HBO Max and a, and a few other, Paramount and a few others. So I'm very, very proud of that. But uh, all of you, all of you, from my perspective, are our responsibility, are our children, are the next generation. There's not anything that we won't do. The reason that we produced the book was because of you, uh, because we wanted to leave, leave God's word. Uh, even uh, with our children, uh, we have all these trusts and all these documents and all these things that we structured and put in place and a will and all those things. But the most important document that we have crafted was our love letter to them reminding them of their faith. That's the real treasure. That's the real blessing I want to leave to, with you here today that will bless you your entire life, that you will have an opportunity to bless generations with and so forth as well in your own unique way with your own unique special platform that God has given you. So we've been with uh, David Stewart this morning, tender-hearted servant leader, encouraging us in, in prayer and faith and seeking the kingdom. Let's thank him for being with us. And, and let's close in prayer. Father, we've been reminded to seek your kingdom first. We've been affirmed uh, that each one of us is one of one, a precious child of the Most High God with a life to offer for your service. Would you bless David and Thel Thelma Stewart and their family? Would you bless uh, their servant leadership of worldwide technology, encouraging um, a business that honors you and its principles and practices? And would you bless us to make the most of this day as something that we can invest in eternity? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Chapel Band will sing us out. Thank you.
Jesus Christ for